Hello and welcome to another AIC Productions video. So this is actually kind of a redo of a video I actually tried to do and totally failed on. Uh, but that's not entirely my fault. I was trying out a new camera and the new camera recorded zero audio. And so instead of going back and trying to redo that video with all new audio, I'm just going to talk about what I did and show you what I did a little bit. Um, and I'll throw a little bit of that video at the end of this. So. A question I've gotten a number of times on the sub $200 laptops is can you install Linux on them? Which is a great idea. Linux is a very lightweight uh, operating system. One of the biggest problems, especially like with this Asus over here, it only has a 32 gig drive. So as soon as you install Windows and um, you know maybe a couple applications, some media files, whatever, you're out of space. And when you have to do simple things like Windows updates, you actually run into massive problems because there's not enough storage space on the system to run Windows. Uh, also, uh, there's a lot less overhead with the operating system with Linux than there is with Windows. So you'll oftentimes get a better experience out of an older or slower machine by running Linux than you do with Windows because there's just fewer systems using or excuse me there's fewer processes running in the background on the system and so you get a better overall experience on the same hardware so I decided to go ahead and I used Rufus to get the latest build of Ubuntu now I picked Ubuntu because it seems like right now it has a lot of really good uh, support and it's really fleshed out for uh, end users and is very user friendly. Uh, there's other distros out there like CentOS, Mint, things like that, but uh, I specifically did uh, Ubuntu because that seems to be the more popular option right now. That changes as different distros seem to make strides over others, but the great thing about Linux is it is free and if you don't necessarily like one, you can just try another. It's very simple and very easy. And again, I used Rufus. This is a, an 8 gig Transcend uh, USB 3.0 drive that I threw that on. Uh, so uh, one of the videos I'll throw in here is the steps that you go through to boot into the USB drive. They're a little bit different on each one in Windows. You, both of these systems, there's no, you'll hit escape or press F1 or delete or whatever to um, get into your boot options. You have to do that in Windows itself. And I will put that, like I said, at the end of this video if you're interested in those steps. Pretty simple, um, but also very important. So uh, I did run into a couple of, or one problem with the Lenovo 130S. So when I first installed Linux on here, I thought it did not recognize the Wi-Fi card. And so there was no network on there, and so it didn't install the, some of the drivers that you need, and uh, it was not functioning the way it should. The date, and wouldn't, the date and time wouldn't update correctly because it had no internet access. And so I thought I was going to have to dig through and find drivers for the um, Wi-Fi card. What it ended up being is, for whatever reason, by default, on the F7 key, see how there's a little airplane there? I had to hit F7 and turn wireless on or turn airplane mode off. Once I did that, I had rebooted and while well, I did that, connected to my uh, Wi-Fi, uh, rebooted and I was good to go. No, absolutely no issues. The SD card reader works. Uh, all the USB ports seem to work. Connects to the internet just fine. And so that was the only hiccup I had on the one. 30s on the E uh, 203M, no issues at all. Didn't have to mess around with the uh, with the wireless. It worked immediately. Touch pads on both of them work just fine. They seem pretty accurate. Uh, I did notice it. I don't know if it's a driver issue, but the sound isn't as good on the Asus in Linux as it is in Windows. So I'm going to look to see if there's any drivers. I doubt it. In these systems, there are not going to be any custom drivers from the manufacturer in a Linux distro. Uh, but they both bring up web browsers pretty quickly. Um, by default, it's Firefox is the browser on these. Obviously, you can install whatever browser you want. Uh, let's just click on 
YouTube here if I can get there. There's YouTube and YouTube. I'm not logged in or anything, so just showing you. And this is definitely a lot faster. Let me go ahead and mute uh, the sound on these and we'll uh, load up a video just so you can see how it plays. Uh, let's see. So we'll do this first one, Harry Styles, because it's the same on both systems. We'll click at the same time. Now these do have the same processor, the same amount of RAM. They both have 4 gigs of RAM. And I can tell you right now that this experience is significantly better on these systems with Linux than it is on a Windows machine. Uh, it was the same, exact same hardware running Linux than running uh, Windows. Now you're not going to have the same support for things like gaming uh, but you can install things like open office in fact this might already have open office uh, installed so I'm trying to do this two-handed <laughs> and it's confusing um, close tabs so we'll go down to here uh, file settings you want to I don't know what this is. Sorry, let's go to Ubuntu software. Okay, that's their app store. Um, I, now, I'm not super familiar with... Uh, there's LibreOffice. There we go. So you can have some typing on there. Uh, yeah, so if you're wanting a good out-of-box experience, you buy one of these. If you're willing to go through some of the headaches of having to run a non-Windows operating system, because again, obviously it is going to be a little bit different. You're not going to be able to run all the same applications and everything. And, you know, buttons are in the different places, things like that. But these definitely run faster with um, Linux than they do with Windows. And if we go up to here to Files... Um, Let's bring it here. So you can see right here on both of them, 125 gig uh, SSD card. Now, it's not going to be able to open them because it's uh, a format I can't uh, read, the XFAT. So I'm going to have to reformat them. I don't know if there's anything on these cards I care about, so I'm not going to do that right now. I need to check that. But if we just go down to desktop. Um, no, not that one. Uh, let's go to home. Yeah, I apologize. I'm not all that familiar with. There we go. That's what I was looking for. So, computer. Um, the Lenovo has a 64 gig eMMC, so 60.8 gigabytes um, available, and it has 51.2 gigabytes available. So, it uses about 9 gigs, a little over 9 gigs of um, storage for the operating system. Uh, Windows uses nearly 20 gigs, so it's half the size on the drive that Windows is before you start doing anything. So, I think this is a great option if you have one of these $200 machines. I, in fact, I might be doing this on some of my, my other machines just to see how it performs on those. So far, I'm liking it. I'm I'm happy with how the performance is. I'm going to have to force myself uh, to get a little bit more used to Linux. I actually use it quite a bit through work, but it's all command line done through uh, uh, remoting, uh, doing uh, SSH into them. So, uh, anyways. If you uh, have any questions, again, I will put the steps. I did record that. I'll put those steps at the end of this video uh, for each, uh, starting with Asus and then the Lenovo, of how to actually boot from that uh, USB drive. I'm not going to put you through how to actually create the um, USB drive, the bootable USB drive. If you need help with that, you may want to skip this. That's It's not a super difficult process, but... Um, if you're not able to 
create yourself a bootable USB drive, you're going to not enjoy running Linux. There's definitely a lot more hands-on and self-learning you're going to have to do in Linux. Um, so, anyways, again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to answer those, and I hope you have an amazing day. Alright, so we've come to the portion of the video where I'm going to be narrating something I've already done, and what we're doing here is getting it to boot into the USB drive. So we first go into settings, so start settings. Let me adjust the camera there. And from here you go down to update and security, which is at the bottom. And from there, on the left hand side, you click on recovery. And then go down to advanced startup. It will reboot. And then you go to troubleshoot, advanced options, UEFI firmware settings. Go ahead and click on that and continue, and it will reboot and bring you into the UEFI or the BIOS, what, it, what used to be called BIOS. Now, ASUS has a pretty advanced one. They definitely make motherboards. And you can set to boot directly to the Transcend Flash drive there. Go ahead and click on that, hit enter. And right into being able to install Ubuntu. Now, if you noticed, you can actually run it from the USB drive itself. But we're going to be installing it. It's going to load up here. It'll take a few moments to load. Now, this is not a fast process. It takes a minute. All right, now it's come up. There's some settings. We're going to pick English because I speak English. And I read English, then English US, and then on this one it picks up the Wi-Fi right away, connect, and Wi-Fi password, connect, continue. And the steps for both of these as far as setting up the operating system was exactly the same. And we're going to be doing a normal installation. We're not going to do anything special. This isn't going to be a server or anything. So I'm just reading through the options here because I've never installed uh, Ubuntu. I shouldn't say never. I, it's been years since I've installed an Ubuntu distro. So things have changed since the last time I've done it. It does take a minute to load. And we're going to erase the disk and uh, delete Windows partition. And then we're going to install. And it will have us. It's just telling us that it's going to delete everything. Yeah, that's fine. We pick our time zone. That's automatically done because of the internet access. We're going to pick a name, a username, a computer name. And a password. Alright. Same thing and then continue when my camera decides to focus. And 
and then it is installed. And now we're going to do the same thing to the Lenovo. More or less the same steps. Let's get the Lenovo in front of us here real quick. Boot it up. I still have stuff running from when I was doing the battery test. Let me close that out. Alright, same thing. We're going to go to the start menu. And settings. Update security. Then recovery on the left hand side. And advanced startup. And it will reboot. And of course, you got stinking Windows update, so let's skip ahead a little bit. Alright, troubleshooting, advanced options, same as before, UEFI firmware settings. Go ahead and click on that, and then restart. Now we'll go in here, and it doesn't look like Lenovo has updated their UEFI settings in the last. 30 years. It looks exactly like computers did when I started on on 486s years ago. All right, we're going to go down and we're just going to go all the way down to the uh, jet flash and use the uh, F5 or F6 to move it up the list. F6, move it up the list, and then we save it, reboot. Now you're going to want to come back in when you're done and change that back. But now it's going to boot from the USB drive and there we have it we can now install Ubuntu